one of the things that we see in trauma is that someone says, I don't care what you want. I, I want to physically abuse you. I want to sexually abuse you. I want to verbally abuse you. The child is getting this message that his or her will really doesn't matter. So these patients um, have really an underdeveloped sense of will, and they will kind of passively follow you because they've learned, I should just go along with what an authority figure wants. In a way, one of the ways we restructure this relational response to trauma is to just ask, would you like to take a look at this issue? Would, would you like to take a look at this feeling? Uh, do I have your permission to help you regulate your anxiety so we could help you feel calmer? So we are really constantly giving the patient the message that their will is driving the therapy, not our will. What is it about declaration that's important here? Oh, because a patient might say that he has a problem, but when you start to explore it, you realize he's not really working together with you. He's just kind of sitting there passively, not really engaging together with you. So at that point, it's really important. You mentioned you have this problem. Is it your will to, to work on that together here with me? Oftentimes patients say, well, do you think I should? Or my wife said I should, right? Uh -huh. And then we realize that they're, it's like they're projecting their will onto the therapist or uh -huh. onto their wife. So in this way, seeing actually, we almost never have an unmotivated patient. But for many patients, they've learned it's really dangerous to say what they want. Maybe they had a tyrannical father, right, or a tyrannical mother, and they learned, I shouldn't say what I want. So these patients will oftentimes deny that it's their will. But what we, what, if we pay attention to where they project, that's where we see their will is actually secretly located. Very often, we have these kind of subtle misalliances that can go on for quite a while in the treatment because the therapist just doesn't understand what that projection is. Their will is driving the therapy, not our will. She just had to say, you know, I have no right to look at anything here unless it's something you'd like to look at for your own benefit. And so I need to find out what you would like to look at here that you think would be helpful to you. And that you might have to do that for 10, 20, maybe even more minutes until a patient really can declare what they want and that the therapy now starts to be guided by the patient's will. It's really important to remember that it has to be the patient's will driving the therapy. It, it can't be your will. It can't be your will.